Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the boat. Don't get in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Double two fish trip right there. That mutton snapper right there, baby. Episode, we're gonna go over a catch, clean, and cook on one of my favorite reef predators, the king mackerel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to make one of my favorite recipes at the very end fried kingfish balls. Before we get into this stuff, if you wanna learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. All right, folks, so like I said, we're gonna do a catch, clean, and cook on the kingfish. Great fish, very versatile when it comes to the dinner table. But first, let's get into how this whole episode came to be, by the catching of the fish. So I went out fishing the other day with all intents and purposes of trying to show what I consider the easiest way to be to catch king mackerel with a white trolling feather. Headed out of the inlet, got up and rolling. Didn't take very long, got into the hookup with the kingfish. Got him up to the boat, was a nice little juvenile, maybe five, six pounds, not that big. So when I got him back to the dock, I decided to make this catch, clean, and cook episode with this particular fish, which is not only a unique recipe for making the fish, it has a unique processing of the fish style. So what I want to do right now is take you out on the boat and show how we got the meat on the deck. All right, folks, we headed out of Boca Raton Inlet this morning. The idea is, is we're gonna hit the deep ledges of the first, second, and third reef, pull around what I consider to be the fundamental trolling setup for the southeast coast of Florida. What that is, is we're gonna do one line planer trolling and we're gonna have one line up on top. And the lures that we're gonna be using is gonna be the no alibi white trolling feather, the two ounce feather rigged up with a double 80 hooks and we're gonna have about 12 to 16 inches of number four 40 pound wire as a leader. Again, we're gonna be trolling the reef, so we want a little bit of protection for our uh, gear because there are toothy critters everywhere. What we're gonna be using for our planer trolling setup is this, Penn International 30 spooled with 80 pound brake. And the rod that the planer trolling setup is on is a seven foot chaos rod with all roller guides for trolling. And for our top water setup, we're gonna use this medium to light trolling gear, 15 to 30 pound class. This is a Penn International 12H. It's an old school reel, spooled with 20 pound pink monofilament. And on that, we've also got our white trolling feather. Again, same setup, about 12 to 18 inches of wire leader, no swivel attachment right here. As you can see, tied directly onto my main line and two double 80 tandem hook setup. The rod that this is on is a seven foot star rod from the handcrafted series. Currently sitting in right around 140 feet, 139, 140. We're gonna head in a little shallower to about 100 and then we're gonna make smooth S shaped curves in and out of these deep ledges of these reefs. We're gonna head all the way out to about 350, 400. We're gonna see if we can find some fish somewhere hopefully keep on the bite if we find where they're actively feeding. All right, so let's get on into this. All right, so when you're doing this basic Southeast Florida trolling setup, you're gonna wanna let out your planer first. So to let out your planer is very simple. Get the boat going, and you're simply going to cross your motor over and you're gonna let your meter unravel from your yo-yo. All 100 feet of it. Unraveled. Now, once your leader is unraveled, you're going to drop in your planter, put your rod in free spool. Once you've let out enough of your main line, you're going to keep letting out some. So, you want to let your line go a little flat. Make sure your planter's diving down. Lock up your reel and put it in slow forward. And once you do this, you'll see your rod bend over like this. That means your planer is set. It's trolling properly. If your rod is not bent over like this, your planer's not set, you 
got to go ahead and retry, let out some more line, reset it, and let it get it so that it's set and it's pulling properly. We're going to let out the tap water lure, get it up and roll. Now again, this is our top water lure. This is going to be a short line. We're only going to let this guy out about 100, maybe 125 feet. We've got our top water lure set out far enough. We'll set our drag, put our click on. We're good to go. We're set up. All right, we're up and rolling. We're heading towards the east, heading out a little deeper. Currently right in around 160 feet. Marking some stuff on the bottom, which is good. We've got our planer trolling set up. Ready, good to go, set. Again, if you don't see that parabolic bend in that rod, planer's not set, you gotta start over. And we've got our top water trolling setup going on. Pen 12H. Both lures are the two ounce, no alibi white trolling feather. Again, we're gonna be doing between six and eight knots with these lures, because we're trolling. Trolling in its essence is the pursuit of actively hunting fish. Don't ever forget that when you're trolling. You don't want to give fish a chance to run up and examine your bait. You want them to act on the impulse to feed and strike immediately. So there you have it, some good old fashioned fishing fun, you know, some planter trolling, some top water trolling, get the hook up, take your time, hand line your fish in if you're an old school planter trolling guy like I am and get your fish on board safely, get them on ice. All right, so now it's time to process this fish. So for this particular recipe, there's a unique way you clean this fish. What we're gonna do is we take our fish and we're gonna make incisions all the way down his body line like we are going to stake him. But you're not gonna stake it all the way through. You're gonna slice all the way right down to the spine and stop. And you're gonna want your slices to be about inch and a half to two inches apart. You do this all the way down to the tail. Once you get down to the tail, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take two fingers. You're gonna start going from the tail side, pushing forward and you're just simply gonna push the meat out. 
Now there's a lateral line that runs up the length of the fish. So on the underside you've got meat that lays on that side of the lateral line and you've got meat that lays on the top side of the lateral line. So basically you've got two areas of meat to push out with these fingers. And again, you're going to simply just push the meat from the backside towards his head out from underneath the skin. And you'll see the meat pops out fairly easily. What this does is this keeps you from actually filleting the whole fish. It also keeps the lateral line, the red dark meat, inside the fish. You'll see all the white meat is just popping out. This process gives you nothing but the best meat of the fish. Once you get all the way up to the head, you've got all this meat that's popped out from behind the skin, you take your hand in a swiping fashion, almost like a karate chop, and you run it straight down his body, and most of them will come off really easily into a pile at the back side of his tail. If they didn't all come off, you can pick the remaining ones off and, you know, add them to the pile. So now that you've got that done, it's time to flip them over and repeat that process on the other side. Again, on the other side, you're doing the same thing. You're going to slice all the way down the body like you're staking the fish, but not going through the spine. Then you're going to pop out all the little kingfish balls from the back side to the front side. Then you'll swipe your hand down just like you're doing a karate chop trying to get them all off. If you feel like you didn't get enough meat out of the fish and you want the remaining stuff, of course, just stick your fingers underneath the skin and it'll pop out. And now one of the most important parts of cleaning and processing any fish is to not rinse it off with fresh water. No matter how bloody, no matter how slimy, do not rinse it off with fresh water. It will turn it into mush. So now you've got your nice pile of kingfish meat laying there. We're just going to bag it up and get ready and bring it home. All right, so that was pretty cool. A little unique way of how to clean a king mackerel. Not your average everyday filleting or staking. Now I do realize that this leaves a little meat on the fish. It leaves all the lateral line, which is a good thing if you're not into dark meat. It also leaves a little bit of meat up by the dorsal side. But like I said, if you really want that meat, you can always go back and take it out. So now that we've cleaned our fish, brought it home, it's time to do my favorite part of any fishing adventure, the cooking and eating. Like I said, with the cooking and eating, we're gonna make one of my favorite dishes for kingfish, fried kingfish balls. So with any fish, before I cook it, what I do is I let it rest in a brine. This simple brine is some salt, juice of one lemon, some ice, some water. You're gonna slosh that all around. Then when you're done, you're gonna dump all your fish meat in there, mix it up. You're gonna let it rest in this brine for at least a half an hour. Okay, so now that we've let the fish sit in the brine for a half an hour, we're gonna take it out. We're gonna set it on a paper towel, get it all out. And then we're gonna pat it dry. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna bread the fish meat because we are frying it. This breading is very simple. It's the way I like to fry my fish. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple handfuls of the kingfish balls and we're gonna coat them in flour. Then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna dunk them in an egg wash. The egg wash is simple. It's about three eggs and some milk. Then we're gonna coat them in panko. And then we'll set them off to the side. And we're gonna do all of them just like this. Now, once we've got all of our kingfish balls breaded, we're going to take them and we're going to let them rest in the refrigerator for about 15 to 20 minutes. Letting your breaded meat, whatever it may be, chicken, fish, anything that you're going to fry, you let it rest in the refrigerator. What this does is it lets that breading adhere to the meat and it doesn't make it its own layer. If you've ever fried something and had the breaded layer peel off, that's because it wasn't rested in the refrigerator and let it get cold and let it all become one unit. You gotta let your fish rest in the refrigerator and get cold when you bread it. And that way you'll have perfectly fried food. So while the fish is finishing up resting in the refrigerator, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some oil in a frying pan and we're gonna turn our oven on just above medium. Get that oil nice and toasty, warm to hot, not ultra piping hot. Now, once the oil's just barely hot enough, we're gonna start taking our kingfish balls and dunking them in there. You're gonna see them start to pop and sizzle and fry. And we're gonna let this first layer sit in that oil for about three to four minutes until it's nice and golden brown. 
After those couple of minutes, we're going to flip them over. And look at that bottom side, that golden color. That's what you're looking for. Once you flip them over, again, another three or four minutes on the second side. And then you're going to start to take them out. Look at how delicious these things look. That's like perfect fried food. So you're taking your kingfish balls out of the oil, setting them on a paper towel. You're going to let them drain for a second. And then you're going to just keep repeating this process, cook up all your kingfish balls. Once you've got them all done, it's time for the plating. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a good couple of handfuls of these nice, delicious fried kingfish balls. You're going to set them on your plate. So we're going to take some sriracha sauce, give us a little squirt that on our plate one side, drop some blue cheese dressing on the other side. We're going to garnish that plate with some jalapenos. Man, look at that. I am seriously making myself hungry right now. Just looking at that. All right, so there you have it. Fried kingfish balls. That stuff is delicious. I mean, it works as great as any appetizer or a meal. And like I said, it's only the best meat from the kingfish too. So, you know, the kids are gonna gobble it up. Anybody who tries it, especially with that dipping sauce, man, it's a home run that is hit way out of the ballpark. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned what I consider to be a little bit of a more unique way to process a kingfish and a delicious recipe that you can set at the table and everyone's gonna enjoy the fried kingfish balls. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.